D&D, &D, and it's become popular with children anywhere from grammar school on up. Not so with a lot of adults who think it's been connected to a number of suicides and murders. The idea of the game, which is played by highly imaginative and intelligent kids, is to assume the role of one of the characters. One game can go on for weeks or even months. The problem seems to be that some kids take it more seriously than others, take it a step further, playing a character who brings them the power in a game they couldn't possibly get in real life. About two months ago, a green eyeball was seen up in the sky. This eyeball was so big it blotted out the sun, okay? These young people are playing Dungeons and Dragons. It's an enormously complicated game in which each player chooses an imaginary character he'll assume. There are dwarfs, knights, and thieves, gods and devils, magic and spells. It's a journey into a land of fantasy through complicated mazes where you use your wits to kill your enemies before they kill you, all in a quest for wealth and power. The dungeon master orchestrates and referees the game, creating scenarios both complicated and terrifying. There is no board, only the dice. I've never seen dice like this. All different sides. What, Six sided. What's the what's the point in that? What, what's it? they're for uh, different things. The four sided is used mainly for damage from a dagger and dart, and magic users hit points. Hit points is the damage that you can take before you die. Everything. There are those who are fearful that the game in the hands of vulnerable kids could do harm, and there is evidence that seems to support that view. Timothy Grice, 21, a shotgun suicide. The detective report noted. D&D &D became a reality. Irving Bink Pulling, 16, an avid D&D &D player, a suicide. Daniel and Stephen Irwin, 16 and 12, a murder and a suicide. The police said they were obsessed with the game. James Allen Kirby, 14 years old, charged with killing his junior high school principal and wounding three other people. Police are blaming D&D. &D. Jeffrey Jaklovich, 14, Stephen Loyacano, 16, Michael Dempsey, 17, and the list goes on. The company that makes the Dungeons and Dragons material is TSR Incorporated of Lake Geneva, Wisconsin. They estimate there are three to four million kids who play the game. Last year, they grossed nearly $30 million with Dungeons and Dragons books and paraphernalia accounting for most of those sales. Gary Gygax owns the company and invented the game. Dieter Sturm is the head of public relations. There are a number of cases that have been documented where there is some connection between D&D. &D. I'm not saying that D&D &D is the cause of the death, but paraphernalia from the game has been found at the scene of the death. Notes, suicide notes referring to the game have been found, and all of these people, in a dozen or so cases, have been documented as avid D&D &D players. And you see no connection whatsoever? We see no connection for the fact that right now there's some three to four million players of the game uh, actively throughout the United States. Uh, right at this particular time, uh, 1985, teenage suicide is, is epidemic across the country with some 5,000 kids a year now taking their lives. Um, I think that uh, to say that uh, because that child uh, played Dungeons & Dragons, uh, who's to say that that child does not watch television, does not participate in, in high school sports, or what per se? I have yet to see one bit of, of valid clinical evidence to show that this has been anything more than coincidental with a disturbed child. If you found 12 kids in murder-suicide with, with one connecting factor in each of them, wouldn't you question it? And that's all people would do. I would certainly do it in a scientific manner, and this is as unscientific as you can get. It's nothing but a witch hunt. Mm -hmm. But the families who have suffered the loss of a loved one would disagree. Pat and Lee Pulling and their 12-year-old daughter, Melissa. The Pullings came home one night three years ago and found Bink, their son, dead on the front lawn of their home in Montpelier, Virginia. He had shot himself through the heart with his father's handgun. Until that night, they had never heard of the game Dungeons and Dragons. Then they began looking through his things. We went into the kitchen, and there on the table were the, what we thought were just regular composition books with schoolwork in it, and much of the Dungeons and Dragons material, along with this curse he had received in the game that day that he died. 
The curse that was placed on Bink's D&D character began, Your soul is mine. I choose the time. In a letter that he left, Bink said he had been summoned to kill himself because he was evil. It was obvious through his writings that he felt he had assumed this character. But what I couldn't get into my mind was, is it possible? How could anybody do that? How could a 16-year-old that is smart, intelligent, why would they believe that they were something in a game? And why would they kill themselves because somebody else said to do it? Your son was well-adjusted? Always. He had never had psychological problems. He was healthy, even physically healthy. Well, we found that uh, uh, there's been numerous parents who say that uh, uh, the child's had no problems and such. Uh, very conclusively, we go back to details of uh, reports of classmates, of teachers, of friends and such, who very much uh, uh, kind of show that the youngster didn't fit in to school. Uh, he had outside problems and generally problems with his family. We know that in the case of Dungeons and Dragons, upwards of three million kids play the game with no apparent serious consequence that for them it exercises the imagination and is just good fun. But there are those who are afraid that impressionable, vulnerable kids could be harmed by it. Dr. Thomas Radecki is a psychiatrist who teaches at the University of Illinois Medical School and who is chairman of the National Coalition on Television Violence. He has been studying the game for several years and says there are 28 deaths related to Dungeons and Dragons in the last five years. In some of those, it was clearly the decisive element. In other ones, it was just a major element in the thinking of the people at the time they committed suicide or, or murder. It's not coincidence, not when you have careful documentation, you have careful notes, you have eyewitnesses. For instance, one case, the parents were actually saw their child summon uh, Dungeons and Dragons demons into his room before he killed himself. Another case, the kid had thought he had the ability to astral travel, coming from the D Dungeons and Dragons game, that he could leave his body and come back. And he had rigged it up just according to the rule book so he could do it. He was surrounded by his materials and put a bullet in his head so he could leave his body, and he's never come back. This is make-believe, and nobody's murdered, and there's no violence there. I mean, uh, to, to use an analogy with another game, who is bankrupted by losing a game of Monopoly? Nobody is, because the money is make-believe, the property is make-believe, and the bankruptcy is make-believe. It is not like Monopoly. There is no board. It is role-playing, which is typically used for behavior modification. If you're using behavior modification and you are doing violent roles and you're doing negative roles continuously, these children not only begin to have violent dreams or violent thoughts or negative depressing type things, they become very much a part of this character. You're role playing, you're rehearsing, you're developing the character hour after hour, day after day. We're really talking about intense, violent, uh, intense involvement in a very uh, serious form of violence. The important thing to remember is, if you're playing a character, let's say, for instance, you have an evil character, the rules tell you your evil character is allowed in the scope of the rules to murder people and to rape and plunder. If you're playing a good character, you're the defender of the people. You try to stop the people from raping and plundering. Yeah, yeah. But it's just your character that does it on the sheet of paper. When the game is over, the game does not tell you to go out and rape and plunder. Yeah. But for some kids, it's not as simple as that. Melissa claimed that D&D &D had become more than just a game for her brother, Bink. Someone it's threatened right. you? Yes. My brother threatened to kill me one time. And we found out later that uh, he had threatened to kill her if uh, she told uh, us that he was playing the game. She knew it, and she was actually scared for her life. After her son's death, Pet Pulling thoroughly investigated the game. She felt so strongly that it was responsible for her son's death that she formed a network of concerned people to warn others about the dangerous aspects of the game. Because of her involvement with D&D, &D, Mrs. Pulling is often consulted by police departments around the